Okay, I'm ready to start painting now. Got my palette laid out with my colors, my liquid medium. And I'll occasionally, what I'm going to do is occasionally zoom in on the painting as I work. I'll do a little bit, zoom in, then work some more off camera and come back because you certainly don't want to watch the entire several hours of me painting this, this painting. Now for some reason the white in this alkyd oil is usually a little too thick right out of the tube whereas the other colors are a lot closer so I always add some uh, add some liquid to anything that has a lot of white in it just to get it to a better consistency. And I always like to start with the bright, on a painting like this at least, I like to start with the brightest almost white areas, not pure white, but the very bright areas first. In this case, it's kind of an orangish, very pale orangish color, a little bit of the magenta in it, a little bit of the cadmium red, and a little bit of yellow. I'll add pure whites at the very end. So I'm going to start their places in Christine's face that are definitely that lighter color. Let me get a little more paint now. I don't, I don't want to work too thin. The idea with painting like this is quick, energetic, and that one of the things that means is don't don't piddle around with real thin little coats of paint. Take you forever. And we want to work. We're doing this to capture the, in an impressionistic way, capture the basic essence of these people making music. So I'm starting out, got some nice thick layers, a little bit of thickness, a little bit of brush stroke showing in the thickness of paint is a good thing. Starting out with all of the brightly lit skin areas on either of them, starting with Christine because she's got a little more light on her. The lighting in a situation like this of live music is often kind of spotlighting, uneven, even unevenness of color, as well as intensity sometimes. So she's brighter, more brightly lit. I'm going to get those bright areas in her put in first, and then I'll go in and put the not quite so bright areas, most of them, on Dave, although this hand has some bright areas. So you see what I'm doing? It's just, I'm just picking out places that have the color I've got on the brush. Totally disconnected areas, that's all right. This stage, it'll all come together. This stage, we're gonna send it this way. I'm sitting a little more offset from the canvas than I would normally be, not quite as straight in front of it, just for the sake of the video. Um, normally, I'd be more straight in front of it, then it's harder for you to see what I'm doing. And I tend to do the same thing when I'm painting for a workshop. Stay off to the side a little more just to make it easier to see. And a little bit brighter in a few spots here just to start the really intense. The last thing I'll do on a painting is come in and put in the almost totally pure white. That'll be about the last thing because I want everything else in place before I decide just how pure white to go. Now on Dave's face, what I can do now is, is hold my brush up against the painting to get a better sense of whether I've got the light dark and the colors where I want them. A little bit of blue in there. This is a darker, darker form of what I had done for the real pale and pristine, but this is a little bit darker, definitely darker, and just a tiny bit of blue in to make it a little more on the brown side, not, not just a, a red-orange color. And now I can start blocking in the brighter areas of his face. By the way, the music I have on is, is um, actually their album that they were playing when I watched this, when I took these pictures. So it helps bring back the feel of what's going on that I'm trying to portray to actually have that music on. I'm 
not worrying about staying in my lines real carefully, being real neat about it, because I can go back and touch up later. What I want to get is that nice energetic movement. And I can fix it up later, but if I try to move too slowly, I'm not going to have the, the kind of energetic brushwork that I want. So it's better to move, move more quickly and fix it up later. I'm going to zoom in now just so you can see much closer up what I'm doing so far. Stay. Let me stay in close as I work on things, just so you can see a little bit better at this early stage before we get some more done and then come back. You get some of those browner shadows in Dave's face. I've got some of both of my reds, ultramarine blue, and yellow. It doesn't really matter which yellow. I use the deeper yellow in this just because it's a darker color I'm going to. The yellows have the different, the two different yellows have less effect on them how colors mix in the other colors. The blues are distinctly different. The reds are distinctly different. The yellows are a little bit different. One's more lemony, the other one's a little more orangey, but it's, it doesn't affect the overall mix of mixed colors as much. So You could get away with a single yellow in your palette pretty easily. I just like the two. Sometimes it's, it's good to have. The intensity of color lights on a stage tend to create little bits and pieces and highlights of intense color on subjects. And that's important to get, to really get that, the look of that, that unique stage light. It's very different from outside natural light. So don't be afraid of some intense color when you paint. See, I, right, right now I'm putting on some almost pure cadmium reds in place because that's how it's hitting it. And you'll notice too that I'm doing this, I'm painting this thing with this ridiculously big brush. And this is a one inch wide flat brush. Why would I use such a wide brush? because it keeps me from getting bogged down in tiny details. I've got a, a tip that I can use for things. I've got a sharp edge so I can do broad areas, but I can use all, go all the way down to the fine tip. But it keeps me moving quicker and keeps a looser, more impressionistic look. So now I'm going to just uh, get a bunch more done before I come back with some more video. I'm at right now just the beginnings but we'll you'll see what happens in between as I go back as I turn off paint a while and then I'll come back this seems like kind of a fun area so I brought the camera back on for a little I'm starting to do these darks Dave's fur hat Dave Dave's one of these musicians that just about always had it as a hat on even in real regular life, and especially on stage. It's just part of who he is. Um, and in the winter, it's often a big furry sort of a hat like this. So you see how I'm doing that. Now I'm going to get some of the dark of his hair in. And that's going to start making the 
the bright areas I put in first with his face start to come more alive. And you'll see how the color starts. The dark starts to contrast with the light, and all of this starts to come together a little bit more. I've gotten more done on their head, their hair, their faces. Um, right now, I'm working, starting to work on the music, on the instruments. The accord, on Christine's accordion, and then I'll work on uh, on Dave's guitar. I've got a mix. I'm working mi with mixes here of either both of the reds, some ultramarine blue in, but also a little bit of yellow at times, so it doesn't turn too purple on me. So it stays more in the in the toned down browns. And see, I want to get the suggestion of those folds in the accordion, but again, I'm, I want to mean it some, maintain some consistency of, of just how impressionistic I'm getting. So I don't want it to get too tight and detailed. I don't want it to be so loose you can't tell what in the world's going on. Sort of somewhere in between is what I'm shooting for through most of this. That's why the big brush, the loose approach, don't worry too much about fine detail. We can come back and add the detail we need later if it's, if it's too soft. But if it's too tight, if we worry about painting it in a real realistic fashion, it's not going to have that, that energetic, impressionistic looseness that I'm after. 